Καλησπέρα σε όλους. Good afternoon everyone. Before we start, I would like to give the floor. I would like to give the floor to Mr. Yanis Tathas and thank him for his invitation to participate in the first uh, conference on crime without punishment, Nazi crimes against humanity in Europe. Yanis, we're all ears. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is a special day. It is the last day of this conference. But it is quite important uh, to us uh, because we will have uh, uh, people uh, speaking from uh, this tomorrow and we have a lot of young children attending the conference because we have Vargiro Castretti, Vasiliki, Thanasis, and they give a struggle on their own all these years. And you, Niki, being from this tomo, you are the new, the young generation who will actually take over after our generation for our struggle. With us, we have two people, anti-fascist, uh, in the anti-fascist uh, struggle, And we have uh, Alexandra Santa, the father of whom uh, took down uh, the flag, the German flag, from the Acropolis, and Trianda Filiat, Kostopoulou, an activist who fought in Germany mainly, where she helped uh, develop uh, collective memory there and uh, communicated uh, to people what Germans have done in the rest of Europe. Not Germans, of course, we talk about uh, the Nazis. And uh, she is the person who spoke uh, loudly about uh, what the Nazis did in various countries all these past years. So she raised awareness among people everywhere. And nowadays we all understand that it is rather difficult. Some uh, time ago, We had uh, a Nazi organization being part of the parliament. So our obligation is not to forget. We need to remember our uh, history, to convey it uh, to the generations uh, to come in order not to repeat all of these unfortunate events. And now I think you have uh, the floor now to share your points of view and hopefully next year we will have uh, this conference live uh, in uh, Vistomo and uh, hopefully we will have the chance to meet in person. As uh, Yanis mentioned earlier, It is quite important uh, that uh, people of our generation participate in this action. Uh, we are present and we are there to honor our area. I do remember my grandfather's uh, narrative at the age of 15 back then, and a lot of uh, our compatriots. So in uh, this tomo do remember uh, the narratives and stories of their ancestors. But uh, uh, I think that our obligation now is to remember the past. And uh, Vasiliki Kastriti is our first speaker, international and European studies, uh, postgraduate degree holder. He will talk to us about the contemporary aspects of racism 
the European dimension. Good afternoon, everyone. Before I start uh, my presentation, I would like to thank the municipality for inviting me to participate in this conference. And I would like to thank uh, the uh, municipality for the Museum of uh, uh, Nazi uh, victim, Victims. The aim is to talk about if 81 years after uh, the initiation of World War II and 77 years after the massacre of uh, this, uh, we have uh, uh, these uh, preliminary ideas uh, like uh, uh, hostility, for example, uh, that uh, led to racism and massacre. I will talk about racism in Europe nowadays and how it is depicted in Greece and in Europe. And of course, I will talk about the EU actions against racism. And I will talk about the new uh, contract about uh, uh, asylum and uh, migration. Uh, we try, I try to have uh, an approach that does not diminish any other uh, groups of people, but mainly focuses on uh, immigrants, because that is what has affected the European uh, being uh, nowadays. Regarding society, we see an upgrade uh, and, uh, of uh, racist uh, speech and uh, things deteriorated uh, further because of uh, the crisis. Uh, after 2015, we see uh, an increase uh, of the conservative reactions combined with uh, the increase of uh, migration flows. And uh, that is happening, this is uh, a hate speech which is omnipresent on a daily pre uh, present, on a daily basis. And that is how it is approached. Besides the daily behavior, we have the organized racist violence. As it was referred in reports for 2019, even though the cases have reduced, in 2019 we had a lot of racist cases, around 50 that were executed from organized team against uh, refugees and uh, migrants. What is of uh, paramount importance is, according to this uh, report, uh, the perpetrators are simple citizens, are just uh, ordinary citizens, and at a percentage of them are minors. I would like to remind at this point uh, the public opinion before 2015 uh, vis-a-vis -vis the immigrants. Uh, they were rather positive, but uh, after 2015, uh, they started being negative because, of course, of the increased uh, flows. In any case, nevertheless, uh, we see that a lot of uh, people are against uh, something that uh, does not meet uh, their uh, standards. And uh, we have uh, increased the incidence of uh, discrimination. We see a lot of incidents of discrimination, but <clears throat> the perpetrators usually attack uh, uh, the victims uh, thinking that they won't be punished, and the victims perceive this attack as something that is expected to happen uh, to, to them. The, framework, of course, is deteriorated when we have the institutional uh, racism uh, depicted. It is expressed via the various, the behavior of the ordinary citizens, but also of the state officials. A very recent uh, uh, example of social exclusion is that of citizenship, uh, which says that the applicants for Greek citizenship should uh, 
have uh, revenues for seven consecutive years in Greece without uh, before applying for the citizen. So she, he or she should not be unemployed for seven years uh, in order to have uh, the right to apply for a citizenship. Something which is very difficult uh, knowing the uh, financial conditions uh, in uh, Greece. At the European level, uh, the uh, uh, incidents remain uh, the same. Discrimination uh, incidents and cases are quite uh, high. As in the case of uh, Greece, uh, the Committee of uh, Human Rights uh, state uh, that the victims, uh, they are not uh, to uh, bring forward uh, these attacks for the same reason as in Greece. The existing uh, processes uh, for uh, claims uh, do not uh, favor the victims. The pandem pandemic uh, operated in favor of racism, according to the reports of the European Commission against uh, racism and uh, the Organization of Human Rights, uh, discrimination and attacks against immigrants and refugees increased uh, during this period of crisis. So 99 uh, years, uh, uh, 19 years after uh, the equality uh, rules, a lot of uh, states have not uh, conveyed in their uh, law system the European legislation, uh, even though uh, all local uh, legislation uh, provide uh, for anti-racism uh, behaviors. Uh, racist uh, speech is a form of uh, racist discrimination, which is uh, considered uh, less dangerous uh, in comparison with other forms of marginalization. Nevertheless, we need to be cautious and understand if this kind of racism includes other aspects because it influences uh, the subconscious of people and actually interferes with the ideas of tolerance towards others. Uh, this uh, style and acceptance of uh, everyday racism, even though not, even though not uh, proven, is uh, linked uh, to extremist uh, attacks uh, at the European uh, level. And I will mention a problem, uh, an, an attack here in Hanau, Germany, where a German uh, killed nine immigrants uh, in uh, a letter found in his uh, house. The perpetrator said that some people that cannot be hosted by Germany should be eliminated. It is quite interesting to see uh, the uh, extreme right all the attacks against mayors in favor of uh, migrants. Uh, in conclusion, uh, regarding uh, the uh, social dimension of uh, racism, uh, repetitive incidents of uh, discrimination and non-punishment of the perpetrators lead to the conclusion that uh, uh, racism is acceptable in the society as behaviors that introduce discriminations are included in various institutions uh, and the impediments uh, imposed on people because of their uh, race, origin, etc. Uh, give us uh, the idea that a lot of racist approaches uh, tend to become acceptable in the society. And uh, in order to fight uh, that, we have to uh, rearrange the representation of people in the parliament. Uh, uh, quite recently, we have seen uh, the introduction 
of uh, extreme uh, right wing entering uh, the parliament, especially around the 1950s, but in the latest uh, ex elections, even uh, though oh, the party for Germany remains the third, third party, uh, we see that its percentages have uh, fallen. And uh, this uh, trend uh, uh, tends to be uh, the rule around uh, Europe lately. <laughs> Nevertheless, we see in the regional elections of certain countries, like in uh, Spain, uh, some extreme right parties uh, uh, take uh, over the Ayuso party, for example, uh, got uh, more votes than all three left-wing uh, parties. And uh, also Vox increased uh, uh, its um, power in uh, the parliament. Uh, all those uh, incidents show that there are some things that need uh, to be uh, done. We see... <coughs> Uh, that in Austria, for example, we have the Popular Party prevailing in Hungary since uh, 1918. We have uh, Viktor Orban, who has been uh, for many years now prime minister, and in the elections of 2019, his party uh, collected the 52% of the votes, having a very strict uh, discriminatory and uh, anti-migration uh, agenda. A lot of uh, elections are expected in 2021. Uh, in Germany, for example, uh, we are expecting uh, the Greens uh, to uh, increase their percentages uh, and uh, uh, the xenophobic uh, party of uh, Germany might remain third party. That is not the case, unfortunately, unfortunately, for France with the elections of 2022, where the extreme right-wing party is flirting with uh, power. Uh, so the local elections uh, will uh, not be uh, immune by the uh, general elections. And we also saw that uh, even the European Parliament uh, has been affected by uh, the profiles of elections in the various European uh, countries. It is rather clear, I dare say, that the European edifice based on human rights and human dignity and the principles of freedom and democracy, equality and the rule of law is questioned. In 2021, the reasons that feed this uh, uh, ideology still resist. A new strategy should be introduced to protect uh, people from racism. In uh, September 2020, the Commission uh, announced a rather ambitious uh, action plan in order to introduce equality uh, and fight uh, discrimination and racism for the next years. At the same time, the fact that until today, a lot of uh, refugees and uh, migrants uh, are faced with challenges concerning the labor market, education, etc. The Commission uh, was led uh, two months later uh, uh, to introduce an action plan for the next year uh, for uh, the uh, integration of migrants and refugees in the host countries. The main problem remains asylum. What is the case? What are the developments? We all know that uh, 
that the negotiations did not advance uh, regarding the asylum uh, requirements. And uh, we have the Visegrad uh, team uh, repeatedly being negative against uh, refugees because of uh, xenophobia. And on the other part, we have internal pressures exercised in various uh, states. These uh, catastrophic uh, results are obvious in our country. Since May 2020, we had... Uh, uh, postponement of uh, the asylum uh, uh, awarding and we had a lot of uh, incidents uh, regarding uh, refugees. A new approach now is considered uh, as a sine qua non. The Commission introduced a new plan on migration based on uh, on the acceleration of the asylum process uh, clearly as a result of the internal uh, pressure of uh, the xenophobic, xenophobic state in order, but uh, by accelerating uh, the process there are some uh, ideas that uh, a speedy process might not be fair towards the asylum uh, petitioners and uh, because the time won't be available for the examiner to check all uh, the uh, data. I am afraid from incidents already uh, uh, being uh, communicated, I think uh, that uh, the process need be rearranged. The new agreement is to solve two issues. The processes uh, at the border for those asking in the, for international protection. If uh, the first uh, leads uh, to the uh, return of those who uh, do not meet the criteria, the second pillar might also fail as well in connection to the asylum uh, petitioners. The whole approach, nevertheless, shows uh, that the European uh, Union is weak to deal with uh, thorny issues. Uh, um, economic uh, changes uh, and political challenges so that uh, uh, racism and migration will be uh, thorny issues here and in the future. We see a turn towards uh, a conservative model which risks uh, uh, the key communautaire even though uh, the Charter of Human Rights is binding for all uh, member states. There are uh, scarce indications uh, that local uh, uh, legislations are scrutinized uh, in order to see if the European uh, uh, legislation is transferred uh, to national uh, legislation. So, I personally have not uh, seen an inspiring plan concerning education and uh, uh, or the promotion of uh, a culture of diversity in uh, Europe. On the other hand, I do worry. Uh, because uh, if these steps are not taken, uh, discrimination will continue uh, existing. We, we all uh, need to be vigilant. Uh, in the future, racism uh, won't uh, be expressed the same way as in the past. As a journalist says, uh, uh, the modern uh, journalism uh, will play in terms of marketing uh, 
And the mayor of Germany once said uh, that the politics cannot assist. Uh, the problem lies in the heart of our society. We made mistakes in our education. We need to teach our uh, students uh, that uh, in Germany we have a past that should not be repeated. A lot of people are uh, not happy. And uh, this means that uh, they can be easily manip manipulated. Thank you very much. Uh, Vasiliki, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. And now we will continue with uh, Mr. Thanasis Dimakas, political uh, scientist and, uh, and uh, a specialist in uh, political analysis from the Aristotle uh, University of uh, Thessaloniki. And uh, he has participated in various conferences. He is active in uh, the editions, uh, and he is uh, part of the editorial board, uh, Kambun uh, magazine. He will talk to us about Greece, Greece uh, Greek extreme right today. Before I start with, with my presentation, let me say a big thank you to all of you for the invitation. I hope that this uh, initiative will go on in the next uh, coming years, that the agenda will be expanded and we'll have more and more people every year attending. So let me share my screen. Can you see it? Is it okay? Can you see the slide so please? Please confirm to the speaker. No. So, as I said before, the topic of my presentation is the far right in Greece uh, today. So, uh, it, it is linked with uh, the thematic of our discussion uh, in a very direct way because the far right represents a threat against democratic institutions, democracy, and uh, humanity as a whole. Practically speaking, what I will try to do is to map the current state of affairs my research has been based on the comparison of the electoral results of the far right countries in the last uh, uh, general elections the local community once uh, and the local um, uh, the local government uh, elections and the european parliament elections of 2019 what i try to do is to provide facts elements and some insights of mine uh, in order to build the puzzle, uh, the, the comprehensive uh, image you like of our right. So I have three major questions that I will try to reply in my presentation. In order just to trigger this discussion, and these are the three main points. What is the ideological and political context of uh, far-right parties? Uh, what is the current the potential and dynamic? And what will the future of far-right be? When talking about far-right, there's always a confusion, uh, some disagreement about it. There are different definitions about far-right. We know that they have racist, uh, counter-immigrant and nationalistic uh, features. That's something we can find in traditional far-right parties. But we also have more modern theories that add elements to the, uh, the far-right. Nativism, um, uh, populism, and uh, authoritarianism. So we have the fourth wave of far-right. Uh, they have uh, a kind of discourse which is uh, counter-systemic, however, it is absolutely conventional. They go hand in hand with the system and they have a very intense uh, semantic, um, let's say, focus on, on the words. Let's talk about the practical stuff. In Greece, what we call far right, far right, and that's my point of uh, uh, research, is what Ms. Yuriado has identified. It's the right of the right. We're talking about the political rights on the right of Nea Demokratia in the political map. Of course, we're not talking about a single space. There is a lot of uh, uh, 
differences, we have splits. Um, there is a, some, some branches of this um, of big, of big parties uh, on the right of Nea uh, Democratia. Um, there is um, feedback and a loop of uh, people supporting this or that party. So when we started after the dictatorship, we have had Le Pen and other parties supporting uh, the king. And now we have a conspiracy based and a national uh, populist, uh, nationalistic and populist uh, countries like El Nikilisi. We know more of these things. We used to have uh, Laos, uh, Anxiety Illness, Chrissy Avgi, and uh, Hellenic Solution. These are some of the parties. We have some smaller than them. But we will uh, focus on these two uh, big ones, the uh, Golden Dawn and the Nikilisi, Hellenic Solution. In my research, I took down and analyzed the votes uh, these uh, parties received mainly talking about Golden Dawn and Hellenic Solution and Nikki Lisi. At the same time, we also have an analysis, a comparative analysis, in order to see how the space of the far right moves in the course of time. I'm emphasizing mainly on the general elections and the European Parliament elections, because it's quite difficult to have a panhellenic, uh, nationwide conclusion about uh, just based on the elections for local government. I will provide you some details about that as well, but uh, it's a bit dubious whether we can have a comprehensive conclusion based on uh, the local, on the elections for local governments. I will give you the official results as presented by the Ministry of Internal Affairs or Ministry of Interior, as it's called now. Now, we have the European elections of 2019. Uh, Top of the table from the space, we have of the, I'm talking about the space of the far right. We're talking about Golden Dawn, 275,000 votes, and Nikki Lisi, 236,000 votes. They each uh, got one seat in the uh, European Parliament. Then we have Laos with 70,000 uh, votes, and Exarchy Elinus, 45,000, less than 1%. And we have another purely conspiracy based. Uh, uh, party, the so-called Elino analysis that uh, had received 29,000 votes. So if we take that in total, we're talking about 650,000 voters in aggregate. This rings a bell, I think. We all have to listen to that and we have to keep this for the future. Not, not for, we have to keep it not just for this uh, presentation, but to keep a note of that for the remaining part of this discussion. Golden Dawn lost one seat. It remains the top uh, party, and this uh, seat went to Eliniki Lisi. So in this way, as we will see, there is a new way opened in order to change the, uh, the predominant party of the far right. Let's check and see now the electoral trajectory of far right. Uh, when a pen uh, won a seat for the uh, for the far for the European Parliament, there has been some kind of a freezing. Uh, the far right was not that dynamic. This changed back in 2004 after 1984, because in 2004 the Laicos Orthodox Negermos won one seat in the European Parliament. Uh, so we see that in the 21st century. The far right is going up strong in the European Parliament. They have various uh, uh, political vehicles for that. And as you can see, we have Laos, Golden Dawn. Uh, they they gain they acquired some seats twice. And Exarchy Elnes and Telniki Lisi. What are the reasons of success of the far right in elections? So many reasons. Let me stick to two of them. The most important ones. Uh, for me. The first one is the nature of the elections uh, themse it's, uh, themselves. Uh, in the international and Hellenic literature, these elections have been uh, characterized as a second tier electoral process, which means that people go to the ballot in a very loose way. Uh, there's um, many abstain, and they believe that 
they this is a vote of complaint mainly this means that we have a, a context that favors far right parties the second reason that uh, complements the first one is that in the 21st century especially in the last two decades of it we see that there is a counter immigrant counter refugee uh, discourse that has prevailed uh, the far right agenda has prevailed so it's very easy for these parties to rely on that and get some electoral gains out of that this is not the case just in greece it has to do with europe uh, european far right parties with their increased percentages Actually, we have two governments currently uh, in Hungary, in Poland, uh, ruled, um, uh, let's say, uh, him, uh, driven by the far right. Now, talking about uh, the elections for the 2019 elections for the local governments, uh, we have to pinpoint the following Golden Dawn is the only party that presented uh, electoral lists in 12 out of the four, or out of the 13 regional um, constituencies and they had regional councillors uh, elected in almost all of them in all of them in total they got a bit less of 200,000 votes less than the general elections that is but there are some significant results like the ones in Attica approximately 90,000 votes, 35,000 votes in Central Macedonia, uh, and they have, there are other regions in which Golden Dawn had uh, very good performance. Talking about municipal elections, that's a, a different framework, because in this case, Golden Dawn had a candidate mayor both in Athens and in Piraeus. That's not accidental. These are areas which, according to Mavris, even before Golden Dawn uh, took off, electorally speaking, they, they had a course, they had kernels, let's say, of uh, support there. And they had the so-called uh, squadrons of attack, uh, which were uh, illegally acting, as we already know. Now, closing my remark about Athens, let me say the following, which we have to keep in mind. Athens, has been characterized as the castle of Golden Dawn, maybe if you remember, when Mikos, Nikos Mikhailiakos was elected um, municipal uh, council, he entered the, uh, the, the, the venue using a Nazi way and um, gesture, which made a symbolic gesture to, that also characterized the trajectory of Golden Dawn later on. In the last two elections for local government, uh, Golden Dawn uh, kept its forces, uh, and it's not accidental that in both cases, Christ, uh, Casidiaris was voted fourth, uh, going well beyond other candidates of historic parties, uh, like the one of the Communist Party. As I said before, the 2019 general elections followed the two previous elections I mentioned. And this is the main part of my research. The most important electoral performance have been observed, as you can see on the slide, uh, in the, let's say, um, change the substitution between Golden Dawn and Hellenic um, solution. Hellenic solution, Likilisi made it easy into the parliament. Uh, Golden Dawn, uh, by hair, were, did failed to go over the elect the, uh, the threshold. We also have uh, Anexarti Elnes and Laikos Orthodox Snegermos. Uh, both parties decided not to take part in the elections. We, also, we actually talk about uh, both parties being uh, self dissolved because they have no future. Uh, actually, they have disappeared. A few more uh, details from uh, the recent general elections of 2019. And here you can see the performance of the largest far right parties in the last two electoral campaigns, uh, general uh, election, ele general electoral campaigns. We're talking about the, what I would like to highlight is the difference in the total of votes, um, let's say, collected. Just 5,000 votes. 
which means, in other words, that far right remained intact uh, from 2015 to 2019, despite the differences between these two parties, because on the one hand, Golden Dawn is a purely neo-Nazi uh, party, and on the other hand, uh, Nikilisi is a conspiracy-like, uh, friendly and uh, nationalistic uh, uh, party. What we can see is that the core of the voters remained intact. Another thing we can see is that Hellenic Solution failed to absorb the Golden Dawn voters in total. They won, some of them, but Anexarty Elnes and Laos as I said before, failed to participate in the elections. So they won, um, they won something out of them as well. Moving on to the post-elections uh, developments, which means uh, going closer to the current date, the event that stands out is the so-called uh, trial of the Golden Dawn and the sentence of uh, the final sentence of this party. Of course, we have already seen that this, uh, this uh, uh, party was being, uh, let's say, dismantled bit by bit. Uh, top, uh, top members like Cassidiaris and Lagos have already been sentenced and it was obvious that the time was clicking backwards for this uh, party. So when we finally reach the date of the final sentence of the top leaders of the party, Uh, this has been a historical event, and it has been taken down in Greek history as one of the most important events. So, but as a result of this sentence, uh, we have had some outcomes. But this is a question. Uh, here lies a question. Nobody can still answer that. Uh, it's a dynamic phenomenon, of course, of the evolution of a party, but it, uh, we have to uh, explore it. So the question is the following. Is the final sentencing of Golden Dawn uh, criminally speaking, does this also entail its social sentence? Before I give a reply to that, uh, let's check what are the, uh, the the facts after the conviction, the criminal convention of Golden Dawn. Uh, we see that many of the offices of Golden Dawn were closed. Let me remind you that Golden Dawn used to have 80 to 90 local organizations. Now they have no more than two or three. They, of course, used to get the state aid. Of course, the fact that all uh, convicted members have been deprived of their political rights means a lot. All these things. All this show that Golden Dawn is done or it's about to be done, it's about to be exterminated or to, to, to disappear from the electoral map. But as I said before, uh, Golden Dawn is not the only party of this space. We have to take for granted that Golden Dawn is about to, uh, to uh, disappear. Hellenic uh, Likilisi seems to be frozen at the, at, uh, the public uh, polls, but there's another party, the party of Kassidiaris, with a very intense physical and online presence. That's the second bell that we have to ring. For instance, in the area of Nice, of Nikia and Thessaloniki. In Nikia, we've seen there's a group of uh, Cassidiari supporters uh, um, uh, doing uh, billboard announcements and doing uh, various stuff. And on the other hand, in Thessaloniki, there has been uh, the initial gathering of uh, the party and the march uh, that activated uh, his supporters in a way. Quite recently, we saw that this party got some, got a 1.5% percentage of the virtual, the, the, of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, let's say, support in a public survey carried out. Now, the pandemic. The pandemic was a global phenomenon, but let's see what the far right has done vis a vis the pandemic. So, far right, globally speaking, embraced the movement of the deniers, of the refuters. So let me remind you uh, the words by Trump and others about the pandemic. In our country, far right, either via Velopoulos or by other smaller groups, supported these conspiracy theories 
and linked them with nationalistic theories of conspiracy. It might sound bizarre, might make us laugh, makes us feel surprised, but indeed there's people who believe that the new world order want uh, to take our lives away from us, uh, the lizard people want to control the planet, etc. Uh, the, the serpent people, apologies. Um, of course, this is the context of the far right, where there is a, a wave of deniers uh, developing in various in various areas. My, maybe you remember those at schools that uh, were against the self test for kid for kids, uh, and the top of the uh, the, the cherry of the uh, the top was uh, the march in Evasmos with hundreds of people marching against the uh, counter pandemic measures involving Alexander the Great and some other theories creating this, what has been called uh, uh, many, freely translated, sprayed people, uh, which is a purely Greek uh, expression. Uh, now, conclusions. I think it is worth uh, making a, uh, a review of them. So far right in the 2019 general elections, which is the most recent uh, case, uh, retained an important electoral support. And this is also proven by the performance of uh, both Golden Dawn and Hellenic and Teleniki Lisi uh, in the general elections and the European Parliament elections. Of course, Golden Dawn is not anymore the dominant party, dominating party. Eleniki Lisi um, manages to be represented in both parliaments, which is important for uh, symbolic and financial reasons. And at the same time, uh, Hellenic solution, Eleniki Lisi becomes the top party of the far right. Uh, so we have a... Um, so people of the far right go away from a purely nazistic Nazi country, uh, party and moves towards a purely nationalistic one. Another point that we have to stress about uh, the current state of affairs in the far right has to do with the name of the Northern Macedonia country. There was an expectation that far right would increase its power. Uh, it would bring people together on that basis. It seems that it won't happen. I think what the Nea Democratia Party did was very important because initially they, re they denied uh, this uh, name for the country and absorbed some voters. But of course, this was just a missed opportunity for the far right and all other far right supporters in order to get something out of that. So in other words, far right did not uh, rip benefits out of the national issue of the name of Skopje, which was to change the name of the country of Skopje uh, to Northern Macedonia. As I said, elections for local governments uh, provide certain, um, let's say, insights, uh, but we don't get the full picture. However, we have to to recognize that Golden Dawn had an important performance in, for, in the elections for local governments. Uh, nationwide, they got a 2.5% and Cassidiaris in Athens got a 10.5% of the votes, which corroborated that until 2009, uh, 2019, um, Golden Dawn had a certain, had a footing uh, in the Greek society because no other party has been registered in the past, having such an important electoral performance in uh, elections for local governments. So we have to say that in this respect, Golden Dawn has been the exception of the rule. People did not vote for, for, for far right parties in the past. However, they did so because the Golden Dawn was able to bring people uh, around uh, sub to support them. After this party uh, disappeared, we hope that these voters will go back or to go to for the first time to something more democratic or progressive. As I said before, the far right uh, parties have a very strong electoral benefit out of uh, Euroscepticism. They are the quasi sole recipients of such voters, although we have far left parties that are equally Eurosceptic. Uh, I provide you with some details uh, following the about the European Parliament elections, and you see how high far right parties uh, score in the European elections eight, nine percent. Another bell that we have to ring and listen very carefully is 
the fact that the relationship of voters with far right is not something temporary. It's not uh, something, it's something that, uh, it's a link. It's not something casual. Uh, they have a very strong link that uh, has been there and keeps supporting far right. We're talking about some hundreds of thousands of voters uh, who belong to the wider space of the far right. So given also the fact that we have extreme groups or extreme uh, or individuals within the Net Democratia, we have to understand that the number of supporters of the far right is quite bigger. But they are being, let's say, um, um, over, um, they are being covered by the biggest umbrella that's called uh, Ne Demokratia. Uh, let me go back to Anexarity, Illness and Laos. There, this phenomenon showed that there has been an oversupply of parties. Sorry for the term. Both parties used to coexist uh, in, a, in a coalition governments and after that coalition in the next electoral process, they vanished, which leads to the following uh, conclusion. Far right is a space that's made mainly of uh, um, parties um, for objections, um, expendable parties used for coalition governments. As I said, parties that took part in coalition governments, uh, they got vanished, they, they vanished. So it seems that this space cannot handle many big parties that represent more than 3% of the electoral uh, body. Now, a few thoughts about the future, some questions about the future, and my epilogue. We have to take certain facts into account. The, the area is now being uh, dominated by someone else. Uh, Golden Dawn has been convicted as a criminal organization. Um, we have uh, the electoral failure of Golden Dawn and the split, and certain uh, members have left. And we have an increasing uh, tension with Turkey. So this is a very critical context, and it's very critical to understand and really interesting to see how far right will uh, move in the future. What will be the road they will follow? For instance, two questions. Will the Greek far right uh, follow the alt-right model, the alternative right, as it was the case, for instance, in the US with uh, certain Trump supporters or in Germany? The second question, linked also uh, to the thematic of this conference, will the absorptions, absorption of extreme people by, gov by powerful parties uh, like Ne Demokratia uh, decreases the threat against democratic institutions and human rights, or contrary to that, it's a, a bypass to bring racism, um, uh, xen xenophobia back on the table. Uh, and bigotry back on the table. So whatever the route of our right will follow, we have to be alert because as uh, the Italian uh, Hebrew sing, uh, author Primo Levi has said for uh, the Holocaust, it happened once, but it may happen again. So it's up to us uh, to prevent that. It's up to us to fight for something better, something more humane. Thank you for your attention. And I hope that we will have a fruitful discussion later on. Thank you very much, Thanasis. Let's now move on to Mrs. Tria Dafilia Kostopoulou, a psychologist. She has worked and lived in Germany for many years, so she knows in depth the issue of Greek-German relations. And she also knows uh, the relation of uh, Germans with the recent uh, history. Please, please, before we move on to Tria Dafilia, allow me to say to both speakers, that this conference, I have followed the entire conference, that their contributions were quite uh, unique and I'm really proud of them, both for Thanasis and Vasiliki. That's all I had to say. Really important contributions indeed. So let me, so let's give the floor now to Mrs. Tria Dafilia Kostopoulou, 
Today, she will offer, emphasize on how the historic past is being perceived in Germany and what uh, is the impact of uh, the, war the claim for the war reparations. Mrs. Kostopoulou, will you have the floor? Thank you very much. First of all, I would like uh, to uh, thank uh, the municipality of Vistomon, uh, the mayor, Mr. Uh, Satas, and of course, Amalia Papayoano for her patience uh, with me. In 2015, Aristotle uh, University, there was an educational site with educational scenarios for uh, the high school financed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Germany. The site was under the title uh, History from uh, World War II and was approved by the then Ministry of Education, the Ministry per se for the dissemination of uh, the website uh, took uh, 20,000 euros from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of uh, uh, Germany and uh, the Hellenic German Fund for the Future. One of the aims of this website is to help uh, students appreciate uh, peace and the contribution of Germany after World War II. Uh, reparations, recognition of uh, culpability, etc. This perception of uh, the post-war Germany prevails in, uh, all over the world, and Germany is uh, a role model in dealing with the past. The way the uh, uh, historic responsibility was dealt with in Germany is ideal as perceived, uh, but uh, was that the case uh, as it is uh, uh, promoted by this educational website I mentioned earlier? How do you deal with historic uh, responsibility when after the war uh, you man uh, the state with members of the Nazist party? When in 1950, in public uh, offices, we have more than ex Nazis than in 1933 in high uh, rank positions in the judicial, uh, the health uh, system, etc. When the ministries, even important uh, for uh, dealing with Nazi crimes like justice and foreign affairs, are manned with uh, ex SS and Nazis, when in 1955 uh, you introduce uh, Bundesgen and uh, uh, the uh, officers and sub officers, uh, all of them come from Wehrmacht, uh, and in some cases, uh, from uh, Waffen SS. Uh, when uh, you silence uh, or omit uh, uh, the, uh, in, with risk of elimination or naive uh, crimes, when you introduce in 1958 uh, the Central Service of Justice for the investigation of uh, the crimes committed uh, and the director of this service. Uh, is an ex-Nazi, what do you expect? Uh, this list can uh, continue with a lot of other examples where I believe uh, that dealing with the past uh, in Germany is not uh, a role model at all. I don't have the time uh, to enumerate the MPs, ministries, uh, assistant ministers, or uh, heads uh, of uh, states we see in the post-war uh, Germany, all members of the Socialist Party. I will talk about the Chancellor and uh, the Presidency, the first uh, coalition government after the war, 1916-69, uh, the Chancellor was an ex-Nazi, Kurt Kissinger, and 24 uh, ministers, uh, ex-members of the Socialist Party. Some of them were members of ESA and SS. And even in the next uh, government, 69 to 70, with Willy Brandt as chancellor, uh, the ministers uh, included in this government were 12 ex-socialists, three 
president were members of the socialist uh, party. Walter Sell, uh, se uh, uh, se 74 to 77, and Karl Sperz uh, from 79 to 84, who since uh, 1933 was uh, part of uh, the attack squad. Two presidents were uh, of paramount importance uh, for Greece, Gustav Heinemann, 69 uh, uh, 74, and uh, his uh, descendants. They were not a member of the Nazi party, even though Heinemann was involved in the crime called uh, uh, obligatory labor since 1936, uh, was a consultant uh, of the then war. Uh, 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 factory and uh, responsible for uh, compulsory labor. Uh, in 1952, uh, the then president had a shared, uh, a, a common friend, uh, uh, this uh, co shared uh, friend was Marx Verden, the man who slaughtered uh, the uh, Greeks of, uh, Salon, of uh, Saloniki. He, in Calabria, he said, I came here to maintain the memory of this event live in Germany. I feel ashamed in this area. Only those who accept their past can find their way to the future. Uh, well, I won't make any comments on these words. How is it possible after 10, 20, 30 years after the world, the war, the end of World War II, to have uh, in high rank uh, post uh, members of the ex Nazis uh, party? One explanation is the world, uh, old war, the uh, former Nazis said that what uh, they made them to become members of the national. The Socialist Party was anti-communism, and in the conscious of society, uh, it was understood that post-war uh, Germany was threatened by communists. Another explanation is that the process of uh, the past uh, was no more than just a motto. Most people were not involved with processing uh, the past, but they wanted to just... Uh, cross a line and close this chapter of history, just to put an end in the past. The responsibility for the crimes of, nation of uh, nationalism back then was awarded to a small party of uh, the wider party. In the families and in the public speech, the memory about the past, the narratives, focus uh, on their own uh, victims uh, from the Allies, uh, the poverty and uh, famine, deportations of Germans uh, uh, who were uh, sent away after the end of uh, World War II. With uh, the trial of Eichmann in 1961, the German population faced uh, pictures of the Holocaust uh, that had never been used, neither in the Nuremberg uh, trial. Then we had the Auschwitz trials in Frankfurt in 1963, and uh, the trial against 10 members in Strebnica in 1964 in Düsseldorf. During this period, one or might observe a rise of awareness in, among the Greek, the German society regarding the crimes were, which were committed against Jews during the Nazi uh, uh, regime and the lack of punishment. The trials uh, actually uh, promoted the uh, revolt of the students later who wanted to distance themselves from uh, the generation of their parents. The main role for the uh, revolt of the students uh, was the coalition government uh, and the voting uh, of the emergency laws. Uh, the new generation 
that is asking questions to their parents and mothers, uh, to their fathers and mothers about Nisens, uh, tries to understand and uh, actually convicts and is faced 23 years after the end of the world, uh, a government uh, with chancellor of Na uh, and ministers of uh, Nazi and former Nazi without any opposition, since it is a coalition government with the participation of uh, Social Democrats, it is faced with a government which votes for authoritarian laws providing for the intervention of the army, even uh, against uh, uh, internal uh, re revolts uh, at the end of the 1960s and beginning of the 1970s, uh, one can see in Germany a phase of non-involvement with the historical past uh, or even an effort to forget it from uh, the first part of uh, trying to understand and uh, the prosecution of the Nazist regime at the beginning of 1960s, which was signaling uh, an acceptance of responsibility, then uh, Germany uh, passes uh, uh, to uh, the... Um, symbolic level, and we have Billy Brandt kneeling, uh, accepting in a way uh, the responsibility of Germans. From recent published uh, uh, papers, uh, we see uh, that uh, the, the foundation of symbolic acts uh, were introduced in order to replace the claims for reparations. In Germany, in history lessons, uh, uh, people, uh, uh, mal, uh, the uh, teachers are limited to certain uh, historical events, uh, like uh, the events in Poland, deportation of Germans uh, from the East, the Holocaust, uh, the end of World War II, and the rest is uh, silenced. Uh, in a study carried out uh, uh, by the German parliament and it was in uh, 2018, it was uh, declared the following. The World War II as a, an army event is not important in the curriculum. And uh, uh, only some events are mentioned, uh, like the Stalingrad battle and others, uh, 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 that are not mentioned any longer. The Jews is mentioned as victims, uh, but not alone. If uh, there is a reference to other teams of uh, victims, they are referred to occasionally, and they are clarified in only certain cases. Some uh, groups of uh, victims are not mentioned at all. Uh, consequently, the German students learn nothing about the Greek, the German occupation in Greece and the massacres so like the one in uh, the Istomon. The study concludes that uh, the curricula as a whole for the period of uh, uh, nationalism give the impression of uh, a criminal state without perpetrators. Where are the perpetrators or the organization of perpetrators? The crime organization uh, are discussed rarely. The German population uh, tends to forget or is described in curricula as just uh, supporters. Knowledge about the crime against Jews in Europe and concentration crimes in Auschwitz had as a result for many decades to have the outcome uh, is that uh, uh, Germans should be silent when uh, Auschwitz was discussed uh, in 1959. Uh, the ministries of defense uh, of foreign affairs uh, of the Fischer government uh, uh, talk about Auschwitz to justify the military participation of Germany in the imperialist Nazi uh, war against uh, Yugoslavia. The Minister of Foreign 
Affairs uh, Chancellor Fisher said back then, without any uh, shame, uh, that uh, Auschwitz is uh, a border, but it is characterized by two principles. No more war, no more Auschwitz, no more uh, genocide, no more fascism. Uh, these uh, two things uh, uh, go together hand in hand, and we do remember of all this bombardment of uh, Yugoslavia. So there is a new era. The Nazi past uh, uh, was overcome by the people by mentioning Auschwitz. Germans felt uh, uh, an ethical superiority vis-à-vis -vis the rest of the world. So they, uh, pay, they paved the way uh, to memorize their own victims of uh, World War II. Even though the mid-90s we had indications uh, of reconstruction of the German culture and the reformation of the society by a society of new fascists, into a society of victims, uh, that there, but there were certain uh, links, the uh, prevalence of a new Auschwitz uh, made them feel comfortable. The mass media played an important role in the perception that Germans were mainly the victims of uh, World War II. Back then, uh, there was an explosion of shows with... Uh, uh, witnesses, uh, uh, some girls uh, from the former uh, 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 association of girls or uh, student uh, or uh, soldiers uh, describing uh, their uh, suffer during the war, but they never mentioned their atrocities. Uh, seeking of eyewitnesses uh, was uh, systematic. Uh, the most impro impressive uh, witnesses uh, were uh, actually um, depicted in some shows like the women of Hitler, the children of Hitler, and were presented as authentic stories conveying the impression that memories of a former uh, man of a brigade have the same burden and dignity with the declarations of a historian. For example, in the same period, uh, scientists uh, talk about a collective drama, which included uh, the na uh, nationalists, we describe uh, these uh, nationalists as mass uh, murderers and uh, war uh, criminals. Uh, the identification of trauma was uh, due uh, because there was a need to describe uh, the problems faced by the survivors of the Holocaust. Uh, as, a con uh, as a consequence, in recent uh, surveys, the interviewees uh, consider their ancestors as victims of World War II and the number of those who consider that in their family there were no perpetrators are two-thirds. Two-thirds of the interviewees say that uh, their uh, ancestors have had helped victims. There are voices supporting uh, that victimization of uh, Germans in no way diminishes their crimes uh, and uh, does not alleviate uh, the pain of the survivors and the victims. But this is the case. If everybody is uh, victimized, nobody is uh, a victim. And who can be the perpetrator when all of them are uh, victims? One might say, what is she talking about? And they might... Uh, say the way uh, Germany dealt with its Nazis uh, past and they took responsibility publicly for the uh, crimes committed by Germans during World War II. I will agree with most of your arguments, but today I would like to give you another point of view. I believe that it uh, should be useful to know 
that the young Germans that come uh, to this tomorrow and uh, are uh, visiting the museum are uh, faced for the first time with this aspect of German history. In uh, German families, when they talk about victims of World War II, they refer to Germans themselves. We need to know that uh, their parents, grandparents, feel uh, victims themselves. And so they have no understanding about the fair uh, claims uh, for war uh, reparations for the victims of Bistomo and elsewhere. I think uh, that how differently uh, Rado president would be uh, faced in Calabria when it was known that he himself uh, had uh, forgotten his Nazi's past in producing in 1952 uh, a, a monument for the massacred Jews in Thessaloniki. And I wonder how seriously can Germans, uh, presidents, uh, ministers, MP, and ambassadors that we want to process together our shared history and uh, conclude with a shared culture of memory. If, as I said earlier, the curricula in their uh, schools do not provide for something that, uh, like that. Will they change that? How can we have a shared culture of uh, memory? The Australian uh, historian uh, identifies the culture of memory as uh, a means to keep nation alive and give people a shared past. This uh, uh, declaration uh, give, creates a lot of questions for a Greek-German memory, a promise uh, uh, to promote to be promoted by the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs of Germany. Coming back to this website I mentioned earlier, I just wonder how the responsible for this program uh, believe that uh, the students will appreciate the contribution of Germany to peace after World War II. In any case, the burden lies to us. We have uh, a long of way ahead collective uh, struggle against fascism and nazism for uh, justice and war reparations. Thank you very much. We would like uh, to thank Mrs. Kostopoulou. Uh, and it was an honor to have you with us. And now we will continue with Alexander Santa. Uh, and it is an honor for us to have you with us being in the first conference organized for the victims of the massacre of uh, the Stumo Alexander Sander. She is the daughter of Lucky Sanders, who uh, uh, her father, uh, along with uh, uh, Manolis Glezos, uh, took down uh, the flag, the Nazi flag from Acropolis. Mrs. Sander will talk to us about uh, the people make choices. Choices make history. She is the National Council for Claim of German Debts. We're all here. Good afternoon, dear Mayor. Thank you very much for the invitation. Please ask the speaker to speak louder. So thank you for inviting me to this conference. Can you tell us a little bit more so that we can hear you better? We can't hear you. We want a little bit more so that we can hear you better. We want a little bit more so that we can hear you better. Now we can hear you better. Yes, now we can So, I would like to start by saying people make choices, and choices make history. Today, we are here to honor our dead. The victims massacred on June 10th, 1944. Um, 
the massacre that was carried out by inhuman beings and which we globally accept that it has been one of the uh, crime, the Nazi crimes against humanity. I think we have a slight issue with uh, Mrs. Sanders connection. Μπορεί κάποιος να επικοινωνήσει να βοηθήσει την κυρία Σάντα ε, με τη σύνδεσή της, γιατί βλέπω και εγώ κολλημένη την εικόνα της. Ε... Ναι, προσπαθούμε. Μπορούμε να πάμε παρακάτω κάπου. Να πάτε μήπως λίγο στον κύριο Δήμαρχο. Βεβαίως. Ε, ε, να πω λίγο Γιάννη, κάτι, να ναι, να yes. περιμένουμε λίγο μήπως καταφέρει και... So let's wait a bit for Mrs. Santa's connection to be reestablished because it's the closing uh, contribution. Uh, we'll try to communicate with her so we see what's going on. So until we reconnect, let's have a couple of uh, questions. Μπορούσα να απευθυνθώ λίγο εγώ προς το κλείσιμο, να βάλουμε να so, κάνουμε την ανασκόπηση. Let me now uh, carry on the review of the conference. Are you okay with that? Μίκη, you agree? Λέω, ίσως να έκανα την ανασκόπηση του συνεδρίου. Maybe it would be a good idea for me to start with the review of the conference while we wait for Mrs. Santa to reconnect. The last speaker uh, says the closing act, let's say so. Yanis, would you like to start with the review? Yes, and we will have Mrs. Santa whenever she logs in uh, again. So, uh, you have the floor. Great. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone. All the, the guys and Triada Filia, of course, they gave a completely different, uh, uh, they painted a completely different picture of the conference. They added uh, scientific discourse in this uh, chat and they, they added their own sentiments in it. Of course, I'd like to thank Triada Filia because he has uh, given uh, a fight, an important fight for this Greek German fight not to be established. He's one of the people. Uh, that stands critical uh, to the behavior of the Germans uh, against paying the reparations. We've been collaborating with her and I'd like to thank her for, your, for her struggle. On the, I'm also feeling really great seeing three uh, young people from Distomo, you, Vasiliki, Thanasis, being here with us because you, today, you gave us a lot of courage 
the young generation, I always believed in, in it and I still do. The young generation is here to give us many, many things. It's here to take the relay and continue with this fight because following also the analysis by Vasiliki and Thanasis, this is an ongoing struggle. Ah, Mr. Sanda is back. Great. Οπότε θα μπορέσουμε να συνεχίσουμε. Ωραία. Μας ακούτε? Ναι, ναι. Τέλεια. Ε, ερχόμαστε... Great. So, back to you for your contribution. And then back to Γιάννης. The Second World War was not just a bloodshed war. It was the war of humanity to save human uh, principles and ideas against Nazism, fascism, and militarism. So this memory of the war will remain one of the most important events, the most noteworthy events for the 20th century. That's an undoubted event because humanity made a choice. And as a result, humanity wrote history. Today, in the 21st century, we uh, sadly observe that leaderships in many European countries, European Union itself, and the prevailing uh, concept of power is placed beyond humans, above humans. As a result, wars have not ended, and we experienced uh, the the moving, the deportation, the uh, evacuation of 70 million people uh, to safe uh, areas in order to save themselves from death. That's how we have the huge issue of the uh, refugees, especially in Europe, which depending on the consciousness and the respect to democracy by each people and country, it's being uh, treated or handled. Uh, the, cho the options, the, sele the selection made by every government in every uh, every country um, displayed how history was written by the, this country. Uh, as a result of that, we had uh, xenophobia and racism developed. 82, he 82 years after the outbreak of the Second World War and 80 years after uh, Greece was occupied by the Nazi, the debt of uh, the German occupators and uh, the uh, occupation loan has not been reimbursed, has not been claimed and demanded uh, against uh, the uh, descendants of uh, the uh, of the country of Germany, uh, of uh, the Federal Republic of Germany, that is. Uh, and starting with the reply by the federal uh, the Republic of Germany to our country uh, against our last claim, which our last claim was passed by the Greek Parliament on July 17, 2019, with a huge majority. It was overvoted almost unanimously, and this shows the will of the Greek people for justice to be administered. The laconic reply that there is no such issue on behalf of the Federal Republic of Germany constitutes uh, a shame uh, for the German for Germans themselves. Greece never waived its right for the reparations. Greece, since 1945 and 1947, has been claiming war reparations. The German debt, that is, um, following the Second World War. The claims of Greece remain legally valid and uh, they may be, uh, may be asked for. So two European member states, equal member states, uh, cannot, it's unthinkable that two European member states have may have no proper dialogue and well-intended one. Uh, this is the kind of uh, feeling of justice that have to prevail between European uh, countries. The legal system of Germany has already uh, accepted that there, is no, that there is such an issue for Greece. Let me say that this behavior on behalf of the leadership of the Federal Republic of German, Germany 
is based on the fact it's not doesn't take into account that Nazi uh, surrendered surrendered unconditionally. We must never forget that. And after Western West Germany united with uh, Eastern Germany, and as a result, we have the single German uh, the country of Germany. They are the descendants of the Third Reich, and they have to pay reparations because victims will not come back or the crimes they have committed will not be forgotten. In fact, as we mentioned before, since these acts by the Nazi have been characterized as crimes against humanity. Of course, we have to identify, to underline that we have German scholars, authors, uh, intellectuals, uh, actors, artists, and other people uh, who help and try within the institutional role of theirs and uh, uh, through the official bodies of uh, Germany, like the Bundestag, they try to uh, bring to the surface the issue of the war reparations for Greece, as uh, it is the case with AK Distomo or the German Solidarity uh, Group. So these Germans, along with others, honor uh, their humanity with a sense of ethos and uh, democratic ideals. Especially the case of this topo, we have to mention Yanis Stamoul is never forgotten, the lawyer, a former prefecture of Viotia, who managed for the trial to be held in Italy for the reparations by the Italia, to the Italians. And as a result, the trial uh, decided in favor of the families. And as a result, the struggle continues with Dr. Joachim Lau, who also honored us in this conference. Let me say a couple of words about the trial of Nuremberg, and I will explain you why I'm doing so. August 8th, 1945, in the London Convention, an announcement is made for the uh, State Association of the International Military Court. The IMT, the International Military Tribunal, is made of judges coming from the US, Great Britain, France, and Soviet Union. Uh, top military um, top military, uh, top members of the German military were put in on the stand and based on Article 6 of the constitutional map of the, of the IMT, uh, were accused for the following crimes. Conspiracy to commit uh, the, to commit the claims to, uh, uh, to the counts two and three. Uh, crimes against peace, defined as participation in planning and uh, implementing uh, aggressive attacks, violating various international treaties, war crimes, defined as violations of internationally agreed um, rules uh, for the conduct of war and crimes against humanity, uh, mainly assassinations, uh, slave enslavement, deportation, and other inhuman acts carried out against civilians. Before or uh, during the, uh, the war or any persecution for racial or uh, other reasons. Um, these uh, persecutions were carried out for racial or regional or religious reasons. And during this commitment of the crime, uh, the, um, the, the tribunal has a jurisdiction despite the fact, regardless of the fact of whether the local uh, law, laws have been uh, violated. October 6, 1945, the Nuremberg trial starts. And uh, in uh, October 1st, 1946, the final uh, resolution, the final ruling of the tribunal is being announced. So following that, I'd like to stress 
that uh, friends and allies, the Germans, who are considered methodical and disciplined as a people, I mean, how can it be possible not follow the rules, the terms that are included in every international uh, treaty and violate the internationally agreed rules of war conduct and their obligations that stem following the end of the war, which since their uh, ancestors failed to comply with, they are the, na the uh, natural and legal uh, hires that so for no matter how many years may pass, they will have the obligation uh, to, um, uh, to, to, um, to, to fulfill this obligation for those crimes against humanity. As, uh, as it is uh, in stipulated international conventions, the loser, the, the defeated party, that is the Third Reich, has to pay off and, uh, and uh, materially speaking, reparations, compensations, etc., as a sign of uh, honesty and regret uh, for the destruction of uh, the state uh, infrastructure and the 1,200 villages that have been burned to the ground and the assassinations of numerous civilians, uh, elderly, women, children, uh, babies, the uh, usurpation of uh, uh, Greek artistic artifacts and the so-called occupation loan because they emptied the Greek, uh, the National Bank of Greek uh, Treasury back then, um, uh, which uh, means that this debt has to be paid with interest. However, uh, uh, in other words, this is a very important pending issue, a definitive one that has to be settled by democratic Germania, uh, Germany if they want to be characterized as such and they have to do it uh, immediately. On the, other hand, on the other hand, we see that seemingly the European Union uh, failed to learn the lesson, uh, let alone uh, what happened after the Second uh, World War started. They have uh, uh, reduced to poverty most European states and they have almost fully forgotten uh, the social cohesion between its member states. Uh, economy exists to the benefit of all people, so that all people may have their uh, health care, the education needs for their children, their distancy of receiving a paycheck, uh, the eight-hour shift to work that has been conquered by blood one year ago. So they have their accommodation, their uh, lodgement, and this is all these things are part of democracy. I'm not talking just in theory, I'm talking about practice. So in Greece, after 2010, we have had both challenges and uh, threats to face. Fascism and neo-Nazism uh, um, started to emerge. However, the historical decision of Greek justice to convict, to con uh, for the conviction of Golden Dawn as a uh, criminal organization has been characterized by all as a milestone for uh, post-dictatorship Greece. But as it seems, it was also a milestone for Europe because foreign press and mass media uh, kept on disseminating this bit of news and talking about that. Of course, all Democrats in our country should not be complacent. They should stay alert because the phenomenon of uh, those, uh, um, of uh, those, um, let's say, bodies being uh, developed is something that happened not only in Greece, but almost in all European countries. So we must never allow, allow ourselves and our children to uh, be threatened by fascism, nazism, and these, uh, these ideas. We, in the National uh, Council for the German Debt Towards Greece, uh, remain focused on our target, which is uh, to pay, which is none other but the administration of justice to the victims. Um, most of them are not alive anymore, and their families, and uh, the justice made to Greece uh, that suffered a lot. And as a result of those uh, disasters, uh, that destruction of the country, the growth of the country delayed, and uh, because uh, the reconstruction of the country needed huge funds that were not available. Uh, of course, I'd like to mention that uh, the Federal Republic of Germany should never forget that all European countries helped to rebuild West Germany after the war, uh, giving their pardon 
in practice for the mistakes they have committed, that West Germany has committed, and helped in all means. For instance, loans uh, that not, not paid back, including Greece, which, uh, so Germany currently was able to rise and now represent one of the strongest European Union member states. So uh, from our council, we uh, call the Greek government to swiftly implement the clear mandate by the assembly of the Greek parliament and uh, um, remove all internal barriers uh, in order to make justice to the victims, which is the article 923 of the common penal code, which is to abolish the uh, judicial fee, the stamp that has to be paid uh, for the claims by the victims uh, to be filed. Um, so uh, a reply like that, there is no such issue, should be forgotten. It's a shame. There's one message from us to our friends Germans. Honor the consequences of, of the actions of your uh, ancestors and pay your debt to Greece. The people that gave birth to Karl Marx, Goethe, Bach, Beethoven, and numerous other scientists, artists, philosophers, such a people should never forget their obligations. The National Council on the German Debt to Greece uh, would like to thank you for the invitation to take part in this really interesting conference about this amount. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Santa. Yanis, uh, the, world, the word to you. Thank you very much, Alexandra, because by means of your contribution, your closing uh, speech, uh, and sharing what uh, the council does, uh, you are the follow-up to what your father and Manolis Lesos had done in the past, and we uh, are the next generation, and we have the next generation, like Thanasis Dimakas, who was here since day one. Uh, many of us who try to uh, support this cause. Thank you very much for being here with us, Alexandra, because you carry a very important name, the name of your father, and you're, uh, rip you're honoring it. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, John, you have the floor. Did you hear me, what I said before? I think Mrs. Sada wanted to say something to you. Mrs. Sada, if you want to say something, please unmute yourself. Yes, I just did. I just wanted to say to Yanis that, and this is, I'd like to thank you all. And it's really happy coincidence to be here today. All of you, I'd like to greet my greetings to Ms. Papayoanu. We have had a beautiful collaboration. I'd like to say to Triada Filiakos Topoulou that her speech was amazing. Thank you very, very much, all of you. Yanis, you have the word. So, on my behalf, before the review of the conference, I'd like to thank Amalia Papayoanu together with Dimitra Djiri, Lucas Dimakas, Christopher Papa Nicolaou, and Miltos Sfuduris, uh, uh, constituted the group, the team that worked to put this conference together, this online conference. We hope that next year we will have a physical conference. Last year, because of the pandemic, once our uh, once again, caught us by surprise, and we didn't know how to handle that. That's why we had a one-day event. Our objective since the beginning was to have a proper conference in this tomorrow. A conference open to Europe to discuss about rights, fascism, Nazism, memory, and the claim. We did it this year in this way. We hope that next year we will be able to uh, have the event uh, as we intend to, uh, to host you, because it's one thing talking from a distance and remotely, and then one other thing being in the very place where those crimes were committed. 
Day one uh, was a really interesting day with Lucas de Marcas being the moderator. We discussed about uh, the crimes because uh, we discussed um, we discussed about war crimes, uh, uh, the memory and the debt. We had uh, also the Dean of uh, the University of West Attica with us, together with Yorgos Panagiaris, Professor Yorgos Panagiaris, and together with Amalia, we tried to do something new in this summer, which is to be able and preserve uh, the <clears throat> remains of the uh, victims, because we uh, represent, we have a Holocaust, the only Holocaust where the bones of the dead are still here with us. Uh, uh, so we have to highlight that. And following the preservation, the conservation of the bones, we see that history is being rewritten uh, for those who suffered that massacre. I think that Mr. Anagels gave us an amazing speech. I'd like to thank the University of West uh, of West uh, Universe of West Attica, apologies, in order to, because there's an initiative to have a, war, a laboratory in this summer for the preservation of the bones. We also had Joachim Lau uh, attending the day one of the conference. He is a uh, lawyer in Florence, making his own fight, uh, legal fight for the victims of the, this summer. And because, as it was mentioned, because of the, the Act 923 of the Greek Penal Code, no Greek government, no, no Greek ministry, Minister of Justice has ratified the ruling of the Supreme Court of, of 2002. We also had Lars Reisman, a member of the AK Distoma Group, a team of activists from Hamburg, who for the past 20 years have been supporting our cause. We also had the solidarity uh, team from Berlin. We had uh, Rolf Becker and Manfred Kingele. Um, they both help together with Triada Filia. Uh, they have been helping us a lot to uh, bring in the surface the Nazi crimes in Greece and elsewhere. We also had a historian German historian and uh, uh, journalist, uh, Greek speaking, Eberhard, uh, Greek, Greek educated Eberhard Rotholz. He lives in Greece and he has written many books about the Nazi crimes uh, in Greece. Last but not least, we had Michalis Mitakidis, famous artist member of the active member band who wrote a song. Uh, the title was Edo Tolene Distomo. Edo in Distomo, this is Distomo in, in English. Uh, he really moved us last year because they presented uh, the song live for the very first time last year in the o o empty theater of our mausoleum. What, it was something amazing and we hope uh, next year we will be able to have a live performance uh, that will be also uh, broadcast online. So that was the end of a very sp uh, special day, day one, because we wanted to, to show that artists, activists, legal experts, scientists support us, support us in this effort to keep the memory alive. Day two. Day two uh, was dedicated uh, to the issue of politics for the German war reparations uh, to Greece. Um, Fame Avragani, the uh, famous journalist, the moderator, it was a very particular session because there was an intense political color. We had the regional governor of central Greece, Fanis Panos, because as I said, it is the regional authorities that took the relay from the former uh, now debunked uh, factory to for the claim of this amount. Currently the claim uh, is being handled, uh, is, is being uh, tried in Greece following the Italian 
resolution. And we also have the will by the regional authorities to continue with this uh, uh, with this fight. The same is done is uh, the, the role is the main role is played by Fanny Spanos, the regional government. We also had Athanasios Papadopoulos with us, mayor of Calavrita, president of the network of martyred cities and villages. So uh, it is people like uh, Mr. Papadopoulos and other members of the network that have kept uh, the, uh, the, the fire alive in order not for the memory to be extinct, uh, the memory of martyred cities and villages. This network is a spearhead in this effort. I'm really glad for Mr. Papadopoulos. I want to uh, acclaim him and it's very important that he gave back these 250,000 euros that the German embassy decided to provide them for the cultural center. They gave this money back because for him it was an insult uh, that the previous uh, mayor accepted them. We have to say that for Athanasis. Along, we had Marco de Paulis, the general military prosecutor on the military court of appeal, who Uh, he has fought for that for many years. Um, he also um, shoot the uh, crimes against Italians uh, by the Nazi. He has given many, many interviews uh, and he has taken interviews by the perpetrators, and many of the survivors. The survivors. It was an honor for us to have him with us. We also had Heike Hensel, member of the German Bundestag, uh, member of the Die Linke party. It was back in November 2019 when we, uh, together, we were able to host a conference uh, in the Bundestag organized by the Linke and mem some members of the uh, Green Party and the Social Democrats. So we see that uh, this, the topic, the issue uh, was uh, kept alive also within the context of the Euro of the German Parliament, the discussion about the war operations. That was really important in our, uh, in our cause, in our struggle. And the Linke mainly is uh, uh, at the forefront. We also had Miltiadis Fonturis with us, member of the Association of the Relatives of the Distomo Massacre Victims. He helped a lot with Amalia and Dimitra and Luca and Christos to put this conference together as it's today. Hopefully, once again, uh, we will have a live conference, a physical conference uh, next year. Day three was a bit different. It was more about history and symbolism. Uh, the reason for that was that was that we had participations uh, by, by a member of the Auschwitz-Birkenau Memorial and Museum, the head of it. We also had uh, uh, the director of the Museum of Santana. Uh, they have a museum like ours there. And we also have a representative, we had a representative of the Lidice Memorial because on the same day, uh, June uh, 10th, 1944, they had their own Holocaust in Lidice in the Czech Republic. We also had Georgos Margaritis, uh, Professor Margaritis, along with Michalis Liberatos, uh, historian and uh, PhD holder. They discussed about the historical events that took place. Both Mr. Mar Professor Margaritis and Mr. Liberatos talked about that. Uh, on how uh, Nazism rose uh, and uh, the anti-communism that was very intense. Uh, back then, as said, they also pointed. So we had, uh, so we had the director of the Lidice Memorial. He discussed also the issue of the uh, trial of Nuremberg. He presented uh, the way they tried to uh, bring the massacre uh, on the surface. It was a very strong uh, experience for us. We also had 
the director of the National Park of Peace and the Museum of Santana, the Istatsema, a small city which back in 2019, summer 2019, had the honor of attending the memorial service. Uh, they hold uh, every year, the same thing we do here. They're doing a great job in Santana. It was a Holocaust like the one of uh, this Tomo. Uh, and of course, Germans there made crimes like the ones they committed in this Tomo. They killed children, babies, women. They behaved the same way they uh, behaved in this Tomo. So we have very many common points with uh, them. And as also as said before, we had the head of the diplomacy of the, the head of uh, the of the uh, Auschwitz-Birkenau Memorial Museum, and she discussed about how the memorial and the museum is organized. And something that really uh, struck me was that there was a significant rise in the number of visitors before the pandemic. They almost had 2.5 million visitors. To, to visit uh, the place. Because this is the only way uh, to keep the memory alive. And ending, I'd like to say a big thanks to Amalia, to Lucas, the uh, Macas, Mr. Nicolao, Christos. They gave a fight for the Distomo Museum. Even under the pandemic, the circumstances set by the pandemic, because in the beginning, we had 500 or 1,000 visitors to the museum. And before the pandemic, we had a, a dynamic to reach 50,000 um, visitors in the 2019 2020 period. Uh, we're talking about a huge number. And this was thanks to this team. I'd like to thank them for their contribution for this conference and for <clears throat> we're about to upgrade the museum in a few, uh, a few years. So that's all for me. Thank you. I'd I hope next year we will be all together, healthy, to honor our dead and renew our promise for this fight we give. Uh, and this fight, wherever we stand, in the factory, in the cafeteria, or in our job, or we write articles, it's a an ongoing struggle, an ongoing fight, because we must never forget that history, the fight for history, it never stops. Nazism is still here lurking. That's all for me. Thank you very, very much. And hopefully see you all next year uh, in person. That's all we all hope, I, that's my wish as well, so we can all meet. Uh, in our place and uh, honor our dead. Uh, let me say that tomorrow, for the first time, we'll have the path of uh, salvation. We will start from uh, the square at 6.30 p.m. In real time, we will walk toward, uh, towards Agios Mamas, which was the point of evacuation for many Bistomo residents. It was the only place Germans failed to... to uh, to, to cover. As a result, many uh, people left from there and were able to hide. Tomorrow we'll have the first crossing of the pathway of, of uh, salvation, freely translated. If there's someone uh, listening right now, you are most welcome. Of course, we'll take all necessary uh, health precautions to honor uh, the, uh, the, our dead and the people who survived. Okay, if someone may follow, they're most welcome. I'd like to thank all the attendants. Thank you very much once again, wholeheartedly for the invitation for this conference. And I hope next year we will all be there for the same purpose. Thank you very much, Nikki, that three young people from uh, originating from uh, this Tomo, three young scientists fight for the, the same cause. They are here present and thanks to their contributions they gave us hope for the future and for what we have to keep on fighting for thank you very much have a great night <laughs>